Okay, we're going to be working on finding the formula for the derivative of this basic rational function and then we're going to confirm it using difference quotients or the limit definition of a derivative. It depends on how your teacher says it. But let's just work the problem. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite L of X as a power function, X to the minus 2. And then finding the derivative is really easy. The power rule says I bring down the power as a coefficient and I subtract 1 from the power itself and then I can simplify it minus 2 over x to the third and now when we use the limit definition of a derivative we know what our answer is because it's right there see alright now we're going to use the limit definition L prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of L of x plus h minus L of x divided by h. Alright, so there's three things that need to go here. h just stays h, and don't forget to write it every time until you take the limit. And L of x, I'm going to substitute in 1 over x squared, and L of x plus h, if we know our algebra composition of functions properly, L of x plus h becomes 1 over x plus h squared, Substitute in x plus h for the square or for the x here, and it becomes this function minus l of x, which is 1 over x squared, all divided by h. Now, if I try to take my limit at this point, I plug in 0 for h here and here, and I have something that's undefined. So I need to simplify this complex fraction. And the, the quickest way of doing that is using the concept of a common denominator. So there's three common or three denominators here. I have x plus h squared, x squared, and 1. The common denominator, the, the quickest way to get a common denominator is just to multiply all the denominators together. Don't multiply them out. Just don't do that. <laughs> just leave it like this. And then you take this common denominator and you multiply each term with that common denominator. And lovely things happen when you do this. So here I'm going to multiply by x plus h squared times x squared. Here I'm going to multiply by x plus h squared times x squared. Down here the same, x plus h squared times x squared. And I'm putting them in any order I want because multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't matter. So now the x plus h squares cancel, the x squares cancel. And down here, nothing cancels, but that's okay, because watch what happens. I have the limit as h goes to 0 of, here, this simplifies to x squared. This simplifies to x plus h squared. And then the denominator simplifies to h times x squared times x plus h squared. Notice now, I do not have a complex fraction any longer. But again, when I try to take the limit, I plug in 0 for h and I still get something undefined here. So let's do some more algebra, see if we can rectify that situation. All right, see, limit as h goes to 0 of x squared. Now I'm going to multiply out x plus h squared. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. If you don't believe me, uh, go off to the side on your own paper and multiply out x plus h times x plus h. Check yourself. Start practicing doing that. That's going to help you in the long run to confirm things for yourself instead of always making your teacher do it. Okay, now, once I distribute this negative, everything in this parentheses becomes negative. So I have a plus x squared minus x squared, so those guys go away. So let's see, what am I left with here then? I'm left with the limit as h goes to 0 of minus 2xh minus h squared divided by h x squared, uh, lost the 2 there, x plus h squared. Again, I still don't quite got rid of this, so I'm going to go ahead and factor out an H out of the numerator. Please don't just cancel unless you factor something out. You can't cancel that H with that H unless you can factor out an H out of both of those. 
So I factor out an H, minus 2X minus H. Take your time when you do math. There's no reason to always be in a hurry. Take your time, take each step, and you're going to do well. Now I can take out that factor of 1. Isn't that nice? That's what you want to have happen. You want nice algebra to happen. Limit as h goes to 0 of minus 2x minus h over x squared times x plus h squared. Now, if I take the limit and let h go to 0, that guy goes to 0. That guy goes to 0, and it looks like it's something nice. And in the numerator, I have left minus 2x. And in the denominator, I have x squared times, well, x plus 0 is x, and that's squared. And I got 1x up here, so this 1x is going to go with one of these. That's a factor of 1. So in the end, I have the final derivative as being minus 2 over x cubed, which, if you remember, was the same as the der derivative we got when we used the power rule. So there you go. You're going to see in the uh, comments here a link to this page so that you can print out the work if you need to see it.